Okay, so in this video we're going to find the area of an asteroid. An asteroid is a super ellipse which has been drawn out on this diagram here. So here we've got a circle with radius 1 and inside we've got a little circle drawn with a quarter of the radius of the big one. And there's a mark on this little radius which inscribes this shape as this circle is rotated against the inside of this circle. Now an asteroid is a form of hypocycloid. So basically what it means is this circle is rotated inside the circle. There is other forms of these which are not a hypocycloid where you can rotate the circle outside and then we can look into that another time. But if you want to make this shape on a grapher on your computer what you need is x to the two-thirds plus y to the two-thirds equals one which is a little bit similar to a circle which is x squared plus y squared equals one so the circle is x squared plus y squared is one and this hypocycloid is x to the two-thirds y to the two-thirds and we want the area inside here so first of all when we're rotating this circle this circle will rotate through 8 pi. So little circle rotates 8 pi, basically 4 turns. Now that's going to be important when we come to do the parametric variable A. Okay, so talking of parametrization, we need to work on this formula and calculate our parametric variable. So x of theta. Now theta is the angle where we find these x and y coordinates. So if we want to integrate, we'll need to know where they are. So theta is our angle, which is basically here on this one, or it could be here. In which case it goes all the way around there are different values for theta so any value of theta we need to know what the values are for the x and the y coordinates are so we can integrate so our parametric formula is here so i'm going to write that on the board so big r minus little r cosine theta plus little r cosine big r minus r over r theta and the y it's very similar what uses sine and there's a minus sign in the middle okay now we can go straight in and calculate these parametric equations in regards to theta because our r which is the big radius the big circle radius which is four times the radius of the little circle so we can put the values of four and one in for each of those so x of theta so basically it's right up here so r equals four little r equals one so four minus one is three so cosine theta little r is one so more, no multiple needed there we can just go straight onto it then r minus r is 3, divided by little r is still 3. So cosine of 3, theta. And then y of theta, so something similar, but with the sine. So 3 sine theta minus sine 3 theta. Okay, now we're ready now to look at our integration formula. So let's just have a look at that first. So our integration formula, so if we're integrating round, we just need one rotation. So if we rotate anti-clockwise, that's going to be from 0 to 2 pi, 1 half of x times y prime. These are all variables with regards to theta, minus x prime y d theta. Okay. So we see what we've got here. We've got our x and our y prime, and an x prime and a y. Well, we've got our x and a y. Now we need to find what our x prime and y prime is. 
So we could differentiate these ones where they look like they could be a little bit messy, but there is a trig identity or cosine, which is cosine cubed theta equals one quarter of three cosine theta plus cosine three theta. And similar for sine, which is going to prove quite handy for us here, three sine theta minus sine of three theta. So we've got something very similar here with our cosine. We've got three cosine theta plus cosine of three theta, and it's a quarter of it. So basically what we've got here is four cosine cubed theta. And same here, we've got three sine theta minus sine three theta, but it's only a quarter of what we've got here. So it's a quarter, so it's, so it's four times, again, sine cubed theta. Now this is gonna come in very handy here because we need to evaluate our A. So we've got our asteroid of the little circle rotates through eight pi, and the big circle only rotates through 2 pi. So it's a quarter of the range of parameterization for this integral that we need. So our a will become 1a because we've got a 4 here and we've got 2 pi over 8 pi. So 2 pi over 8 pi equals 1 quarter. So instead of putting in 4a, we've got 4a times a quarter which equals just a. So now we can substitute these fours and just use a as our parametric variable. So now we can write x theta equals a cosine cubed theta and that will give us our variable there using a and our y theta equals a sine cubed theta. So I'm just going to write these in here, rub this off the board, and then we can begin our integration. So x theta equals a cosine cubed theta, and y theta equals a sine cubed theta. Okay, right, let's start, which is the final step now, start on the integral. So our integral is here. So it's one half, zero to two pi. Now we've got our x theta and our y theta, but now we need to find our derivatives. So the derivative of x theta, we can work that out. So we've got a cos cosine cube theta, well a is just a constant multiple, so we can use the power rule. So three a cosine theta, 3 power comes down to 2 power, so then that becomes, let's just write this here for us, x theta equals 3a cosine, and then that'll be squared theta. And then we need to just multiply that by the derivative of cosine, which is minus sine theta. So let's put that into our integral. We also need the y prime. Let's do that one as well. So where are we going to write that? Let's write that one here. Y prime of theta. So power rule again. So it's 3a sine squared theta. And then derivative of sine is cosine. So that's our derivatives taken care of there. So now we're ready to just to plug in our values with regards to theta. So x is a cosine cubed theta. And then multiply that by y prime, which is this one. So 3a sine squared theta cosine theta. And then we're going to subtract our x prime, which is 3a cosine squared theta minus sine theta. So if I just write that in one bracket and not worry about the minus sign just yet, so that's 3a cosine squared theta 
sine theta. And that's multiplied by our y, which is a sine cubed theta. And then derivative, sorry, the integral all with regards to theta. So that's our d theta. Okay. I know that's quite intimidating, but we can simplify this off a little bit more just yet. So if we multiply these out and see where that sends us. So 0 to 2 pi. OK, there's no adds or multiples with regards to these two brackets. So we can just straightforward multiply like terms. So we've got 3a squared, cosine cubed and cosine, which gives us cosine to the 4. And then just a sine squared. Now we've got a minus and a minus, so we'll just do a plus here. And then 3a, we've taken care of the minus, so 3a times a gives us 3a squared. So that's looking constant multiples again here. And then we've got sine cubed and sine, so that's sine to the 4 theta and cosine squared theta. d theta. OK, so we've got one integral here now with just two terms in it now. Now, I think there's more we can do here. We've got the sine squared and the cosine squared. And we've got sine to the 4 and cosine to the 4. Now, if we took a sine squared and a cosine squared out of each and bring the 3a squared out front. So 3a squared, we can factor that out. So 3a squared over 2. 0 to 2 pi. Now that takes care of both of these. So they're now gone. Now we want to take us to the power of 2 of each of these terms out first. So we'll have cosine squared theta sine squared theta. So if we take that out, this term here just gives us a cosine squared theta. And here we're left with a sine squared theta. And that's d theta. OK, well, that's looking very promising because what we know is famous trig identity. This term here just equals 1. So this will basically disappear and we're left with this integral. So we've got 3a squared over 2, 0 to 2 pi, cosine squared theta, sine squared theta. The theta. Okay, now I integrated this on a previous video from 0 to 2 pi. There'll be a link in the bottom, but this integral here basically evaluates to pi over 4. So check how that's done uh, in the previous video, in the link uh, in the description of this video. So then all we're left with now is 3a squared over 2 times pi over 4. OK, so basically the area of an asteroid, so area of an asteroid, not to be confused with asteroid, of course. Asteroid is 3 pi over 8. Two fours at eight, and then the one th a variable which we can multiply by is our variable of parameterization, which is a squared, and our a squared will be re re referencing the radius of the large circle. So basically, what we can take this to is three pi over eight r squared. Now. That's quite handy because we can see that this is less than pi r squared. And the reason that's important is because obviously that's the area of our big circle. So basically, this asteroid is three eighths of the area in comparison to the circle that it's in, 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 enclosed into. So that's something you'll need to bear in mind when calculating it. So, for example, if the radius of this circle is 5, 
So radius equals five. The big circle. Obviously pi r squared, that's 25 pi. And the asteroid. So asteroid, which is three eighths of pi times r squared. So that's going to be 75 over 8 pi. That's when the radius of the big circle is 5. So you can see 75 divided by 8 is just a little bit more than 9. So there we can see. Okay.